One of our big concepts is a limiting reactant problem. This shows up first in our reactions chapter, but you'll see it has the potential to appear even later in, as the course goes on. Here's the basics of the limiting reactant. You have a reaction here, say A plus B goes to C plus D. However, in this case, you're asked about C, say one of the products, but you're given information, like mass or moles, about more than one reactant. In that case, if you follow these black arrows, there's two possible stoichiometry problems you can do, depending on if you start with A or if you start with B. What's the problem with that? Well, that'll give you two different answers for C. <laughs> That's a problem, because we know in chemistry, you're only going to generate so much. So this is what we would call in math an overspecified problem. We have two stoichiometry problems. Well, how do we fix this? Because this would be something common that might happen industrially, where uh, you are just starting with a certain amount of A and a certain amount of B, but you might not use all of them completely. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to do your two stoichiometry problems. And just as a brief review, the three steps for stoichiometry is one, find the moles. Say if you're starting with A, you'd find the moles of A. Then you use a molar ratio, say in this case, to get to the moles of C. And then third step, you'd find the requested unit, say the mass of C. And then you'll do that for both A and B, two separate problems, and you're going to go for your smaller answer. The smaller answer means that whatever reactant it came from is going to limit the amount of C is produced because you basically have less of that reactant based on the molar ratio. So one of the reactants, either A or B, will be the limiting reactant, the one that generates less C, and the other reactant, the one that generates more of the product, will be the reactant in excess. So it's very common to uh, have a problem where we have tell you determine the limiting reactant and determine how much C, or products, that reactant produces. Now another common problem in a limiting reactant question is to find the remaining mass of the excess uh, reactant. So that's the one that's not the limiting reactant, but the other reactant. How do you do that? Well, first, you start with the limiting reactant answer. And by that, I mean, in our case, the C, uh, the, the mass or, say, moles that you would have of C in the products. You start with that answer. Remember, that's a smaller answer. You convert that to moles. First, you'd convert, obviously, to moles of C. And then you'd uh, use a molar ratio and find the moles of the reactant in excess. So now you you do a stoichiometry problem to get the moles of the reactant in excess. Then you'd convert from moles to mass of the reactant in excess. And then notice what we have at that point. Something interesting. We have just calculated the actual mass uh, that was used in the reaction. So we've just calculated this right here. This is a calculated number, it's the amount used. We are given, typically in the problem, how much mass we're asked to start with. Now, the mass given better be larger than the amount used, because that's why the reactant's in excess. So thus, if you use this equation, the amount remaining plus the amount used is equal to the amount given, then just by subtracting the amount used from the amount given, you can find the mass of the reactant in excess that's remaining. Okay? So, for example, if you started with 50 grams of reactant and you found out it was in excess, then the amount that was used better be a number smaller than 50. And when you sum it up with the remaining amount, it equals the amount given. We're going to do some examples of this in class, but first it's important that you get this concept it all uh, sits in the area of stoichiometry.